Hi, I'm Robert Reed. Today I want to talk about watermarks, that is the kind of watermarks you put on your proofing galleries. But I don't mean watermarks like that. That's a wimpy watermark. Because I've had clients screen grab their images, their proofs, and put this on LinkedIn, and it ends up looking like that. This is not a good look. Why would anyone do this? I don't know. So, not those kind of watermarks. I mean a watermark that, I need a watermark that's big, bold, and gets in your face. Something like this. Now that is a watermark. So this is the kind of watermark I'm going to show you how to build today. I'm going to use Photoshop, but any graphics program will work, I would expect. It's a very straightforward process, which is good because I wouldn't be able to do it in Photoshop if it wasn't straightforward. And then we'll take the image and go to Capture One and create a proofing recipe you can use for all your proofs and have the watermark automatically applied. So that's enough of that. Let's get to it. So I'm in Photoshop and I'm going to create a new document that's square and 2000 pixels wide and tall, of course, because it's square. And uh, make sure that the background is also set to transparent. And I'm going with square because that makes it easier to work with different format images when you're overlaying this on top of your proofs. I'm going to zoom out a bit and now select the text tool. You want a medium or regular kind of font. You don't want to go bold here because that makes the, the letters a little bit too thick and it becomes a bit too distracting. And just click on the top left hand corner, make sure this is set to left hand justification, and type the word that you want or, or phrase that you want to be on there, whether it's do not copy or do not print, proof, uh, I'm a cheapskate, whatever you want to go for, just put it there and type it once, then uh, add a space at the end, copy it, and then continue pasting it on the line. And keep going a bit further, at least like halfway, again, the size of the box, just keep going a little bit further. That should be good. And hit the checkbox and then select the, the move tool. So now we want to option click that line, drag it down and shift it over so that the, the words are overlaid kind of like a, a brick pattern, I suppose. Something like that. And then drag down and select both of those lines option click and drag down again and get that spacing so it's about the same as the previous ones. Now select all four of those, oops, all four, option click, I think you get the idea. And the key part is keep going after, you know, don't just fill the box, you need to go again about halfway down. This might do it, I'm going to drag that down. And there. Now we need to select all the layers. I'm just going to go over to the layer box in the bottom right. Select one, shift click the bottom one. Now they're all selected and I can just grab a corner and rotate this about 45 degrees and drag it up a little bit more. Something like that. There we go. And then I will line it up and we can make it a bit smaller just to get all those lines in there. Now you can play around with different size texts, make it a little bit larger so it's maybe not as busy. Um, I'm, you know, this looks like it's going to be fairly compact, so it's pretty busy, but we'll see what it looks like on the image when we get it done. And now I'm going to save this or export it rather as a PNG. Export as. PNG is just the full size, and make sure the transparency is checked. We can also make it smaller by saving it as 8-bit. There's only, there's no color in this image, so it makes sense to keep it as small as we can. And we'll just call that watermark. Okay, uh, now this is Capture One, and I'm going to create a recipe for exporting proofs with a watermark. Now I've got a, another video that's all about process recipes, so I will put a link to that up at the top, but for now we're just going to create a new one for exporting proof. So I'm going to create one starting with this JPEG 2048 for web use, and I'm going to change the name to just JPEG uh, proof, and change the size from 2048 to, uh, let's just say 1500. And everything else I'll just leave alone. Now in the, in the recipe there's the watermark over on the right hand side, and I'm going to select that and choose image. So now we're going to go to the desktop and I'm going to select the watermark 
PNG that we just created, drop it there, and there we go. Now that's very distracting, but the opacity is currently set at 50. We can reduce that here to maybe uh, 10, 11, 12, you know, somewhere around there, whatever really looks good. It's gonna may also depend on the image itself. If there's a lighter background, you might be able to go a little bit more or lower the opacity some more. This darker background, we do need to be able to see the proof over the background. So something like that seems to be okay. You can also change the scale if you want larger letters or go down a bit smaller. That's, of course, really up to you and, and your taste and how you want to make the watermark look. So that is the basics, though, of creating watermark. So now I just select, say, a couple of images. Choose that one. And uh, well, those are the only two different ones I've got. And then I'll export these, go over to the finder, and we can see that they've got proof uh, written all over them. So thanks for watching. I hope you find this useful or helpful in some way. And if you do appreciate a like or even a subscribe to my channel, that would really help me out. I'm Robert Reed. See you next time.